To paraphrase the best movie of all time, somehow iCarly returned. This is something you're probably already aware of, I kinda missed the boat on the initial buzz for this series, but I do have something to say about it so I'm gonna say it anyway. I was pleasantly surprised by the start of the iCarly reboot, and I'd like to dive into why. I won't bore you with a full, long history of iCarly, there are plenty of other videos on the internet that can do that for you, and you probably know the gist. Three friends, web show, fire, spaghetti, tacos, random dancing, etc. It ran from 2007 to 2012, and I liked it. I grew up with it really, and the endless reruns kept it in my life long after it ended. Although I guess it didn't end. Nearly a decade after the last episode, the show is back? Rebooted? Spun off? I don't really know what this is. Same name, same theme song, same cast, just older. That's not completely unheard of. We've had shows like Raven's Home, Girl Meets World, and in the UK we recently had My Mum Tracy Beaker. The characters of Harry Potter were aged up for a stage play. But what stands out about all of these is that every one of them was intended for a young audience. The same age kids were when they initially watched the show, possibly even younger. So the original audience had aged up with the characters, but the new show's tone had stayed the same. There's stuff there for the fans, Easter eggs and returning characters, but to keep it kiddie, the main focus definitely shifts onto the new, younger generation of characters, usually the children of our original heroes. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, these shows brought some beloved characters to a whole new generation of young people, and it was a good compromise for the fans craving something new from the things they love. I say compromise because Disney seem a bit conservative when it comes to letting previously child-focused characters and properties grow up. Something clearly wasn't working with Lizzie McGuire when they tried to reboot the character into a more mature series. Maybe they were worried all the millions of Lizzie McGuire fans under the age of 20 would accidentally stumble onto the show on Disney Plus and see her saying a swear word. Or maybe it's just that children are more impressionable recipients of the capitalist propaganda that they want these childhood icons to promote. Communism. This is why it fell. People didn't want to all be the same. Without incentive, there's no motivation. Without motivation, there's no advancement. Whatever the reason is, we've never really had a children's show that returned to screens as an adult show, with a level of maturity to match its now grown-up audience. That is to say, we've never had a children's show that's done this until now. It's a weird and interesting thing to do, but iCarly has done it. In December of 2020, they announced that a revival of iCarly was in the works and would be coming to Paramount Plus in 2021. What feels like a very short amount of time later, after a blur of teases and trailers, the show is here. This is still iCarly but it's grown up now. Obviously, Carly is back, back in Seattle after her departure to Italy at the end of the original series. She's the same old Carly. After a break from doing the web series, she realizes that it's the thing she loves doing and brings it back. The fictional iCarly show has always had good parallels with the real one. The world has changed a lot since 2012 and it's changed even more since 2007. So both iCarlys are being done for a very different world and a very different internet. So our main character is an older, I, I guess she's an influencer, trying to stay relevant and entertaining people all these years later, which is quite a creative modernization of the old setup, which was really about a group of young influencers before influencers were even a thing. Carly is joined by her cameraman and now producer, Freddie B. Benson. Life for this man is not going very well. He's been married and divorced twice, and his business failed, so he's back living with his mum. This feels more like an excuse to keep him close to Carly and attached to the entertaining mother character than anything particularly meaningful. He's not played up to be too much of a loser. If anything, he seems like he has it together more than any of the others except for his dating life, which is admittedly a bit of a shambles. The other way his situation impacts the show is that he now has to be a father after adopting his stepdaughter from one of his failed marriages, Millicent. Unlike the Girl Meets World slash Harry Potter cursed child kids, she's not the focus of the show at all. Her inclusion is all about the amusing ways her presence impacts Freddy's life, and those ways are quite fun. As for the character herself, she's okay, probably the weakest. I can't tell if she's a bit flat in the performance, a bit lacking in the writing, or if I'm just out of time touch, and this is an accurate portrayal of how young people are these days. I don't love her, but I like what she adds to the dynamic. I guess it's time to address the buttersock-trunked elephant in the room. Of the original iCarly trio, only two have returned. Jeanette McCurdy made the decision not to come back and play Sam Puckett, after giving up acting for a combination of embarrassment, trauma, and a lack of creative fulfillment, which is completely understandable. I've seen people get angry at her, and at the show for this, but it's completely fair enough that she doesn't want to come back, but I also think it's fair enough that the show 
is going ahead without her. The character hasn't vanished, Sam's absence gets a nice acknowledgement, and it's not ridiculously unrealistic that a childhood best friend is off doing other things elsewhere ten years after they finish school. If she eventually shows up, great. If not, they've still got a show. And if we want to see the brighter side of every situation, we have to look no further than Harper, Carly's new best friend and roommate, played excellently by Lacey Mosley. She used to be rich, and now she works at a coffee shop, and she's great. She changes the group dynamic in a fun way, and delivers some of the show's best jokes. There was a bit of backlash to her inclusion because she wasn't Sam, and because people are stupid racists. Paramount did a great job standing up against the abuse she was getting pretty much immediately, which is nice to see. It has to be said that it seems like this series is doing a pretty good job when it comes to representation, not just in the more racially diverse cast, but in what seems to be a conscious effort to represent the LGBTQ plus community, which she loved to see. Another character that's notably not here is Gibby. People really want him back. And look, I love Gibby, but I have to say I'm not really feeling his absence yet. The show existed for a long time with Gibby only as a peripheral character, or not there at all. It seems odd that people are acting like there's no iCarly without him. It was only towards the end that he became a core cast member. I'd be surprised if we didn't get him eventually, because it feels like minor characters could pop up at any moment. Tebow, Mrs. Briggs, Michelle Obama, Luba, the teacher that said, Who wrote this? Who wrote this, this lie? lie? Hell, even chuck in Jane Lynch as Sam's mum again. Or the police officer who got angry when the iCarly sign started encouraging people to pee on him. There is one more returning main character, the best one. Don't say a word! I'm honing my sensory skills, I need to do this on my own. Hello, Millicent. Spencer is suddenly rich, although money was never really an issue in the original series, so not a huge amount has changed. He's still making goofy art and being hilarious. What has changed is his relationship with the other characters. Carly and Freddy are adults now, so instead of the group being split between the kids and the wacky parent figure, they're all just friends. Spencer is the older, wackier friend, but they're all a lot more equal. Especially him and Freddy, who have a really wholesome bond. And it feels like a natural progression now that they're all older. On that topic, let's talk about this new grown-upness as a whole. There were some news outlets that spoke about this show like it was iCarly Rude Edition. Naughtier, swearier, sexier. Jerry Trainer promised sexual situations. This wasn't gonna be your grandma's iCarly, that's for sure. And a few people were concerned that it was gonna be weird and forced, as if the creators were going, look how grown up we're being, aren't we cool? But that is far from the case. It doesn't at all feel like it's being edgy for the sake of it. It just feels like these characters are older and have more mature conversations and interests. They're not chucking around swear words willy-nilly. In fact, it's quite tame on that front. So far, a bitch is about as far as the show will go. Usually from Harper, or from Carly trying to pull off one of Harper's sayings, and failing. It's like Harper always says, you gotta switch it up on a bitch. <laughs> I'll never say that again. <laughs> it was cute though, you try. As for the sexual situations, there have been a few, but it's typical sitcom stuff, where innuendo and implication do the majority of the work. It feels very authentic, and I think that's a testament to the writing quality. On the topic of writing, iCarly's creator Dan Schneider isn't back. I assume he wasn't invited after being fired from Nickelodeon for being a creepy weirdo, or maybe he just lost interest. As a consequence, there are fewer creepy feet jokes, but not much else seems to be lost. The new showrunners were were Jay Kogan and Ali Shouten. However, Kogan left after creative differences with Miranda Cosgrove. That should have been a bad sign, but no, they pulled through. They have other talented writers on the team, including Jordan Mitchell, Nasa Samara, Kate Stamen London, Francesca Ramsey, Danny Fernandez, and they've got Mr. Mosby directing some of the episodes. Everyone is doing a great job. Although, I do think the pilot is a bit wonky. You can never really judge a series like this by its first episode, as it has the tricky job of introducing, or reintroducing, all of the characters, getting them together and into the position that the rest of the series needs them to be in. In this case, to catch us up on the decade-long gap, there is a lot of characters just telling each other what they've been up to, in really awkward and clunky ways that stunt the conversation. Sure, it's necessary to bring us up to speed, but there are probably better ways than this pretty unrelenting bombardment of exposition. After years of doing iCarly with Sam, and then hosting Italian QVC, and then my brief stint in college radio... You're the guy who made the Marshmallow White House sculpture. Pursued my dreams, married for love, Two divorces and a failed startup later, I'm back living with my mom. I'm the rich person with the nice lighting that owns this apartment. That's my stepdaughter. I share custody with my ex, 
who divorced me and took all my nice shirts. When my family lost all their money, all I wanted to do was curl up on the deck of our 50-foot sailboat and cry. But once that episode establishes a new status quo, the other episodes can start returning to the classic iCarly episode formula, which still works. The three subsequent episodes have been really fun. I will say the laugh track does feel a tad obtrusive sometimes, which I think can make the comedy feel worse. Like this line here from Freddy. I'm going to respond to this I hate Carly 57 person with love and light. Love and light? I'm more of a block and report guy myself. <laughs> Because there's a laugh track, my brain sees it as a joke, and I go, That's not funny, you idiot! Why are they laughing? And I get annoyed at the show. But I think if it was just a line in the scene, I wouldn't have even questioned it. It's a perfectly fine thing for Freddy to say. But the laugh track pauses the flow of the scene, draws attention to the fact that something is meant to be funny, and exposes the fact that it's not. This happens a few times. I know this show needs the canned laughter because the original had it, but it doesn't have to be this annoying. But on the whole, the comedy is pretty good. There's nothing ridiculously hilarious, but there are some memorable lines, clever jokes, and well thought out gags. I was surprised at how often I laughed. And honestly, the internet humour is shockingly un out of touch. I kept waiting for the cringe to come, and it just didn't really happen. The writer's fingers seem to be at least fairly close to the pulse, closer than I've ever seen before. They have this brilliant bit where Millicent offers a service to immediately kill a meme by getting a Republican senator over the age of 70 to use it. That's something that's clearly been written by someone who understands how the internet works, and that's pretty consistent and displayed in the surprisingly accurate and funny ways that characters throw around words like himbo, zaddy, short king, and when Millicent calls the 27-year-old Carly a boomer. If you told me beforehand that they tried to be in touch with internet culture, my mind would have gone straight to the how do you do fellow kids worst case scenario, but this feels closer to the best. I imagine it's really tricky to make a show about the internet because of how immediately things change and become dated, but they've lent into that in a creative way. Carly's web show is once again a good representation of the series. Being relevant on the internet is one of Carly's major struggles. Staying on top of trends, capitalising on bursts of relevance, it shows a level of self-awareness that I think, in a way, future-proofs it. What also had the potential to hold the show back was a reliance on references. And there are a lot, but they're often used quite creatively. More than just, hey, remember this? For example, you've probably all seen the modern recreation of a meme that the show featured. Interesting. Interesting. I saw that on Twitter and thought it was cute, but it made me a little bit worried that the series would spend so much time looking back that it trips over itself, and would fail to develop an identity beyond just reminding us of better times. But I was really pleasantly surprised when I saw that moment happen in an episode all about Carly's face becoming a meme, recreating the most famous Miranda Cosgrove meme in an episode all about a new Miranda Cosgrove meme is very meta, and I approve. All the uses of references and callbacks so far have been good. They seem to understand that we don't need to be constantly reminded of the past. It's nostalgic enough to just see these characters living life, breathing air. As I said before, the theme song is the same, which is nice. There's an annoying shortened version of it after the first episode, which I don't get because it's streaming, but it's not the end of the world. Maybe it would have been nice to get a new song, but the title sequence is different and the credits have a lovely, funky, instrumental version of the theme that makes the track's return completely worth it. The production design and sets are pretty good, they have some nice recreations and modernizations of Spencer's apartment and the iCarly studio. When we initially got some photos of them filming, it looked a bit lifeless, but I think it works when it's shot and lit properly. And it's nice to see what pair phones look like in 2021. I enjoy the iCarly world where everyone can just walk into each other's houses. Even Freddy's stepdaughter Millicent strolls on into Carly and Harper's house like she owns the place. The overall vibe of the show is comfy in its familiarity. Despite surface level differences, the heart of the show feels un changed. This simultaneously makes the new, more mature content blend in more, and stand out more. I don't get it. It feels novel, but at the same time, it feels right. One thing that absolutely hasn't changed at all, Miranda Cosgrove is a really great lead. Often in these ensemble sitcoms, you have the kind of normal character, and they're surrounded by funnier, more extreme people. And while that's still the case here, she fills the role of deadpan straight man superbly. Her comic timing is just excellent. Which shouldn't really be a surprise, she's been great since Drake and Josh, but I think she really excels here. 
here. The whole cast are pretty strong. Jerry Trainer hasn't changed a bit, and it's like Nathan Cress never left the role. It's impressive how easily they've slipped back into these characters. I guess what sticks out to me most is that it doesn't feel like a novelty reunion special. It seems like a full revival that has the potential to continue for years. They've been really smart with this show, from its inception to its execution to its marketing. We Gen Zers are big on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon nostalgia at the moment, from memes to viral throwback tweets to YouTube videos to binge trips down memory lane on streaming. And this team has worked with that nostalgia in such measured and creative ways. Look! Over there! Someone's sharing their negative opinion about a TV show you liked as a child! Get on. Yeah. To bring a show back, and aim it not at the children who watch TV now, but the adults who watched it then, fills a gap in the market that we didn't really know existed. I'm sure if this does well, we'll get loads of similar revivals. And I hope it does do well, and manages to find an audience. Obviously it's got the online buzz, and a built-in audience from all those years ago, but I don't know how many people have Paramount Plus, or how many people with Paramount Plus would want to watch it, or how many people would want to get Paramount Plus just for this. I'd appreciate if it got released somewhere overseas, so the members of my nation could watch it legally. I obviously haven't even seen the series yet because we don't have access to that streaming service here, so this has actually just been a parody of a review. What I would have thought of it if I'd seen it, which I haven't obviously. But if it does get seen, I hope people like it. I certainly do, or would. It isn't mind-blowing, but it's something that I think warrants its existence. It's a really clever mix between nostalgia and relevance to our world today. But I'm telling you just how I feel after these initial four episodes. It'll be interesting to see if this show keeps up its high quality, and whether I'm still enjoying it in five, four, three, two episodes time. But for now, iCarly is back, and it feels so wonderful. We're back! <laughs> So this hey, we're back! <laughs> you may disagree. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think of the new show in the comments. If you haven't seen it, maybe give the first few episodes a shot. You may love it, and there's no chance unless you take one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. My plan is to make videos on all kinds of topics, and I'm sure there will be something you enjoy. Check out the description for links to my Twitter, Patreon, new Discord server, Twitch. There'll be a new video soon. I love you lots.